Good afternoon, students. So today I'm going to cover a card uh, best last hope, and I'm going to cover Wandering Earth. So I'm going to be doing a comparison of this book, Si Chin Liu's The Wandering Earth versus Picard, The uh, Last Best Hope. Both these books talk about a supernova that explodes and how to evacuate the people uh, on the planet. And the, and the way in which both of these books evacuate the people from the planet uh, is determined by what culture uh, the book is written in. And so this is going to be a very exciting uh, study of culture. So I started this um, series when I wanted to encourage my students to enjoy research because students thought that research was really dull. And so there are three stages to the research. And the first stage to research is you have to have a good research question. And so the research question I used for this study was, what is science fiction around the world like? And how does each science fiction story around the world differ based on the culture in which they're written? And so that, that there, uh, on this series then discovers how different cultures or the impact that different cultures have on how science fiction uh, stories are written and how the, the and the themes of each science fiction story are also determined by what culture that they're written in. If a science fiction story is written in America, then the science fiction story tends to reflect um, the values of individualism, freedom, equality, democracy, and it tends to be action-packed and very fast, yeah, in other words, very fast action and very little description. Uh, and then um, if it was written uh, like Liu Xiqing in, chi in China, then the action, there's more exposition and the themes reflected are harmony, collectivism and group culture. So, um, ask, so you wanna ask yourself, if you were, if the sun were suddenly to go supernova, what would you do? How would you transport the people to safety? How would you get the people off the planet? And then another research question, and this is the research question for this video, is would you build a spaceship, a generational spaceship that would take the people off the planet safely to, and put them to safety somewhere else away from the supernova? Or would you build engines that would transport the earth away from the supernova. So would you use a spaceship or would you simply transport the entire planet to safety? So which option would you choose? And so in uh, The Wandering Earth, um, Si Qin Liu uh, had a most inventive, innovative uh, solution to how to evacuate people in case of a supernova. So in Si Qin Liu's uh, uh, book, he evacuated the earth by having the earth transported away from the supernova by using large engine thrusters to move the entire planet away from the sun. And so why would you wanna move the entire planet? Well, that reflects the Chinese uh, values of harmony. And in other words, you're, you're very, very um, dedicated to the land of your ancestors. And then, in uh, Best New Hope, Picard. Uh, in this case, it's not the Earth's sun that's uh, exploding, it's the Romulan sun. And so Starfleet decides to help the Romulans evacuate their, the Romulus, the planet. And so here in this book, um, Romulus is the one that's about to endure a star death, as they call it. And so um, Starfleet sends its best spaceships to help evacuate the planet. So which is the better way of evacuating the planet? Uh, moving, uh, moving the planet away from the sun or, or building a lot of spaceships, generational spaceships to move uh, the people to safety. Which is better? There's no answer to which is better. It's just how they're different and that how that the difference reflects the difference in culture. And there's no right or wrong answer to this question. There's no better or worse just simply to embrace the difference and to have fun with the imagination 
of how both authors imagine a different universe for the answer to the question, how do you evacuate people from a supernova? So I'm going to continue this discussion by, um, by sharing, my, sharing my notes. And you can tell I'm a Trekkie, you know, got a new outfit and everything. So um, my notes will then talk about the different themes and the different ways in which one could evacuate Earth or evacuate a planet, sorry, evacuate a planet from a, an exploding supernova. Now in Picard, there's a whole conspiracy about the supernova and about and, 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 the, and so many subplots, which, which is what, what, what Star Trek does best. It's like a space opera in many ways. Um, and in uh, Wandering Earth, it's just more of a tale of survival, man against nature, you see. Uh, how are you going to survive the supernova, where this is man against nature, man against man, and that sort of thing. So uh, I will now, now that I've enticed you uh, to this topic of the research question for this video is, how do you evacuate people when you know that the sun is about to explode? What will you do? Now, that's the, that's the intriguing question for this uh, video. So I will, without, without a question, now share my, share my screen. And here is today's lecture. Picard, Last Best Hope versus Wandering Earth. Research question, how should we escape from a supernova? Should we put everyone on a spaceship to escape a supernova? Or do we drag the entire planet to another location to escape the supernova? Which is the best escape plan? It seems the answer depends on whether you are part of the Western Star Trek culture or if you are part of the Asian wandering earth culture. Stay tuned. So I'm going to be comparing um, Picard and wandering earth. Now, both of these series have a movie uh, and TV uh, associated with them. Picard is a series on um, Paramount Plus and wandering earth you can get on Amazon. So in this, and you can watch it on YouTube as well. So in this day and age, how would people evacuate their planet if they found out that their sun is about to explode? In one novel, it is the Earth's sun that is about to explode. And in another novel, it is the Romulan sun that's about to explode. How would you evacuate people if you knew your planet, planet's sun was about to explode? So if the sun is about to explode, the evacuation process would be an enormous and unprecedented undertaking. Here are some considerations for how the evacuation might be approached in this day and age. Early detection and warning systems, advanced astronomical observations and monitoring would be crucial for detecting any signs of imminent solar instability. Internal collaborations, space agencies, and observatories would need to work together to provide early warning systems to detect such catastrophic events. Spacecraft and interstellar travel, given the vast distances and the limited speed at which current spacecraft can travel, interstellar tra travel might not be a viable um, proportion uh, option. However, advancements in pro propulsion um, energy uh, technology such as eon drives or nuclear propulsion could potentially shorten travel times in the future. Establishing off-world colonies, establishing colonies or other celestial bodies such as Mars or the moon would be an important part of the, uh, the strategy. Advanced life systems, developing sophisticated life support systems would be necessary to sustain humans in space. International cooperation. Given the magnitude of the crisis, global collaboration would be essential. Countries, organizations, individuals would need to work together, sharing resources, knowledge, and expertise to maximize the chances of successful evacuation and survival, prioritizing vulnerable uh, uh, populations. Efforts would, be, would need to be made to prioritize the evacuation of vulnerable populations, such as children, the elderly, and those with medical conditions. Fair and equitable distribution of resources and evacuation opportunities would be critical. Now that was the thorn in both novels of 
how would you evacuate? Who would you choose to evacuate first? Uh, the same thing happened when the Titanic sank. They only had two lifeboats. So who gets to be in the lifeboat and who gets to be on the sinking on the sinking ship? And so in this in this uh, uh, novel, uh, Si Ching Liu, they had a, a lottery, and those who lost the lottery died, and those who won the lottery got to live and got to live in the underground cities. And then as everybody lived in underground cities, then the earth itself was transported by large engine thrusters to a new safe location. So that would probably be in wa Wandering Earth 3. Right now we're still in this one. This, this video just covers Wandering Earth 1. So basically what this video is about is about how would these two cultures, American culture and Chinese culture, how would you handle an exploding supernova? What would you do? Would you use a spaceship or would you just transport the entire planet? So that is the topic for today. So the different approaches to saving people from a supernova uh, reflects the respective cultural backgrounds of both these novels. Picard, The Last Best, Best Hope by Una McCormick. So here on the back of the, the, the novel, okay, it says, the unthinkable is about to become a reality as a stunning revelation exposes um, what the highest level of the Romulan Empire have dangerously attempted to keep secret at all costs. Within a few years, the Romulan star will go supernova, threatening the lives of nearly a billion people and forever altering the geopolitical landscape of the Alpha Quadrant. Putting aside decades of animosity, the Federation embarks on one of the most largest um, humanitarian relief and relocation efforts in history with a newly minted Admiral John Luke Picard leading the charge. Okay, so that's the that's pretty much what the, the book cover of uh, Picard, The Last Hope. So they're gonna send and build a whole bunch of spaceships to help evacuate Romulus, okay? And so here the focus, so here uh, in the Star Trek uh, universe, where there is a supernova in the Romulus, uh, Romulus system. Star Trek helps to build these spaceships to help the Romulans evacuate the planet. The approach of evacuating people from the planet aligns with the ethos of the United Federation of Planets. Star Trek, rooted in American culture, often emphasizes the value placed on individual lives and the importance of preserving lives at all costs. The focus is on prioritizing the safety and well being of individuals, ensuring their survival by relocating them to a secure place. And so this novel begins in the aftermath of the destruction of the Romulan homeworld, as depicted in a 2009 Star Trek movie. Jean Luc Picard, who is retired from Starfleet, is approached by a former colleague, Admiral Kirsten Clancy, who requests his assistance in a rescue mission. A group of Romulan scientists and their families are stranded on the planet Vashti and the, and the Federation wants to evacuate them before the planet becomes uninhabitable. And so um, in uh, Wandering Earth, um, Picard, uh, La The Last Best Hope by Uma McCormick delves into the political complexities of the Star Trek universe and explores themes of redemption, resilience, and the power of unity in the face of adversity. The events of the novel set the stage for the Star Trek Picard television series in which Jean-Luc Picard embarks on a new mission to, under, to, under, to, to uncover the truth behind a conspiracy that threatens the galaxy. In other words, in the Star Trek universe, the, the uh, Romulan supernova may not have been naturally occurring. Okay, so in Wandering Earth, Liu Si Chin's book, here's what it says on the back of the book. It says here, the sun is dying out. The earth will soon be engulfed by the inflating sun. To save human civilization, uh, scientists draw up an escape plan that will bring the whole human race uh, into danger. With the help of thousands of infusion powered engines, the planet Earth will leave the solar system and embark on a, on a 2,500 year journey to the orbit of a star 
4.5 light years away. So, and then the rest of it, it says here, um, beginning with this the short story. And actually this book is a series of short stories by Liu Shi Chen. And only a couple of those short stories deal with the earth being lifted by thrusters. The whole book is not about this one story. That's another difference. In this book, this whole book is about how uh, they're going to rescue the Romulans from their son. Whereas in Wandering Earth, it's only one. Wandering Earth is only one of many short stories. But Wandering Earth has been made into two movies. Wandering Earth 1, which was made in 2019, and then Wandering Earth 2, which is made in 2023, which came out in 2023, and then Wandering Earth 3, which is supposed to come out 2026. And this is a poster for it. So in Wandering Earth by Liu Shi Chen, it is the Earth's sun, not Romulus, that will go supernova. So the nations of the Earth decide to build engine thrusters to carry the Earth away from the sun rather than building spaceships to evacuate the planet. In the year 2058, an expanding red giant sun threatens to engulf the Earth within 100 years. The world's nations are forced to consolidate into a world government and construct 12,000 enormous fusion-powered Earth engines to thrust Earth out of the solar system. Before going on his mission, aboard the Navigation Platform International Space Station, Chinese astronaut Liu Pei Chang leaves his son Qi in the care of his son's uh, grandfather, Han Zhang. Some of humanity, mostly chosen by non-transferable -trans lottery, are moved into underground cities. The remaining billions die in the cataclysms, resulting from stopping the Earth's rotation and thrusting the planet into orbit. And as a result of taking the Earth away from the sun, the surface of the Earth becomes colder than minus 70 Celsius or minus 94 uh, Fahrenheit. So in Chinese culture, the approach of moving the earth uh, reflects a different perspective on collective uh, survival and sacrifice. Chinese cultural traditions often emphasize notions of unity, collective harmony, and the interdependence of individuals with their environment. Wandering earth showcases a deeply ingrained sense of communal responsibility where the survival of humanity is tied to the preservation of the planet itself. The concept of moving the entire planet to save the population reflects a, a willingness to make grand sacrifices for the collective good. These approaches, uh, and then, and then uh, with Picard, last hope, uh, the idea of using a spaceship instead of, instead of transporting the entire planet aligned uh, with the uh, American values of individual autonomy, freedom, and self-determination, which is focused on, which is reflected in the focus of saving individual lives, uh, not, not, not transporting the entire culture, but how you want to save the individual lives. Here you got a spoiler alert for the rest of the summary of Wandering Earth. And so 17 years later, Liu Pei Chang, that's the Chinese ast astronaut, is set to return to Earth after the Chinese New Year. His son, Liu Qi, now an adult, uh, obtains fake IDs and stolen thermal suits from criminal gangs and borrows his grandfather's clearance pass to take his foster sister, Han Do Do, to re requisition a heavy transportation transp transport vehicle to see the surface. Both are arrested at a nearby checkpoint and get jailed, meeting another prisoner, uh, Tim. And so um, as Earth approaches, and in this novel, the, the climax is that as Earth is being transported, then um, as, as Earth gets close to Jupiter, then the gravity of Jupiter grabs Earth into Jupiter's atmosphere, and then Earth is about to collide with Jupiter. And so the climax of this story is how the main characters, uh, Liu Qi, Han, Do Do, in other words, Liu Pei Chang's uh, children, uh, and uh, adopted daughter try to restart one of the engine thrusters at uh, Silo Way C, and in order to uh, ex make an explosion big enough so that the Earth would be moved away from, so that the, the enormity of the blast 
would move the Earth away from Jupiter and break it out of Jupiter's atmosphere. And so that's what they're trying to do. And what happens, spoiler alert, what happens is that even though when they try to restart the engine, it's still not enough. And so what happens is that then uh, Liu Pei Chang, the Chinese astronaut, then has to crash his space station into Jupiter in order to save Earth, resulting in, in his death. So that Liu Pei Chang, he was about to return to Earth after 15, 17 years of service, instead sacrifices himself for the greater good. So that's how, that's, that's the end of the story, you see. And so, so here, um, and so Liu Qi proposes to ignite the mixture of Jupiter's hydrogen with Earth's oxygenated atmosphere, which would cause a shock wave that would knock the Earth back into its regular path and away from Jupiter. Liu Yi configures the, the, the Sula Weisi engine to fire a plasma beam tall enough to ignite Jupiter, but the group is unable to push the firing pin and ignite the engine. Contacted by Dou Dou, uh, Liu Pei Chang is able to persuade the United Earth government to use its communication channels to call assistance for the party at Sula Weisi. But Moss, that's the HAL, the, the, the general computer on the, on the um, space station, reveals that the attempted solution was already proposed to by Israeli scientists and has zero chances of success. So other rescue parties arrive and together manage to ignite the engine, but it falls short of being able to ignite the Jovian uh, hydrogen. So after uh, disabling Moss using a fire started with a bottle of vodka that Makarov smuggled on board. Liu Pei Cheng, that's the Chinese astronaut, flies the space station into the plasma jet. In other words, he flies the entire space station into Jupiter, tearfully ap uh, apologizing to his son for breaking his promise. In other words, he promised in the beginning of the movie, he promised his son they would see each other again. And so he so he broke his promise saying, I'm sorry, son, I'll never be able to see you again. And then he crashes his space station into Jupiter. So he sacrifices himself to ignite the hydrogen of the Jupiter and the oxygen of the Earth. And the subsequent explosion saves Earth, but kills the entire space station and kills Liu Qi. I mean, not Liu Qi, kills Liu Pei Cheng. And so that's the that's the summary, which is so to me, it's so touching that somebody, yeah, to me it's so touching that somebody would sacrifice themselves for the greater good of Earth. So um, I'm going to go, and that's so in the next part of my presentation, I'm going to go over the different themes and the different um, yet yeah, the different themes of the story and how the two different stories differ but depending on whether they were written by a Chinese author, Liu Pei Chang, or an American author, Uma McCormick. And each author writes their story based on their culture. And actually that's what I find so fascinating about studying science fiction from around the world is being able to, um, is being able to talk about the different themes, technological solutions. The approach taken in Picard, Last Best, Last Best Hope, focuses on the advanced technology and scientific capabilities of Star Trek's United Federation of Planets. Evacuating people from the planet showcases Starfleet's ability to utilize starships, transporters, and other sophisticated systems for rescue missions. So this emphasis on technological solutions reflects the American cultural values of progress, innovation, and reliance on scientific advancements to address uh, challenges. In contrast, Wandering Earth emphasizes the use of gigantic engines to physically move the planet away from the supernova. This approach aligns with the Chinese cultural emphasis on pragmatism, resourcefulness, and finding practical solutions to problems. It highlights a reliance on engineering and physical solutions rather than solely relying on advanced technology. Collective responsibility. Picard Last Best Hope focuses on the duty of Starfleet and the United, and the United Federation of Planets to save lives. It reflects on an individualist approach. 
emphasizing responsibility of institutions and authorities to ensure the safety of their citizens. The decision to evacuate people uh, with spaceships aligns with the idea of individual rights and the duty of governments to, to safeguard their constituents. In wandering Earth, however, the approach of moving the planet reflects a more collectivist perspective highlighting the shared responsibility of every individual to contribute to the survival of humanity. It exemplifies the idea of sacrificing personal interests for the greater good and the interconnectedness of all members of society. This emphasis on collective responsibility resonates with Chinese cultural values of social harmony and interdependence. Time and scale. The difference in approaches also relates to the time and scale depicted in the works. In Picard Last Best Hope, the focus is on a swift and efficient evacuation, utilizing advanced technology to transport people to safety. This aligns with the American cultural value of efficiency, urgency, and a pragmatic approach to problem solving. In Wandering Earth, the massive undertaking of moving an entire planet reflects a longer term perspective because it's gonna take 2,500 years to make the trip and once they transport Earth away from its solar system. So this showcases patience, perseverance, and the willingness to undertake monumental tasks for the sake of survival. So this long-term thinking is rooted in Chinese cultural traditions, which often emphasize patience, endurance, and the ability to face challenges with steadfast determination. Leadership and authority. So the, the decision-making process and the role of uh, leadership. So in, in um, the Federation, people vote on what's best to do. And the people of the Federation uh, were against uh, going all the way to Romulus to evacuate a planet in which Romulan, they considered their enemy. And so people voted. And so in order to maintain the popular vote, um, Starfleet had to show positive images uh, and try to persuade the people that we are, sa we are saving lives. You can't just let a billion people die in a supernova. Whereas in Wandering Earth, the decision to move the planet is portrayed as a top-down directive with authorities making crucial decisions for the survival of humanity. And so all of the governments of the Earth in Wandering Earth all get together and decide they're going to transport Earth for its own survival. And all of the governments decide, unite together to build engine thrusters to save Earth from a supernova. And so this way of governance represents the collective decision-making that are um, emphasized, uh, the collective nature, collectivism of Chinese culture, of harmony. So here is a picture from uh, Wandering Earth. This is not an actual United Nations meeting. This is from the um, this is from the, the movie. So this is a special effect from the movie uh, de depicting all the governments of the earth getting together and deciding that they are going to build, uh, they're going to become one earth government, just like the, the Federation is also one united government. But, but in the Federation, the uh, government, the United government is led by the United States. And here, the United in Wandering Earth, the United government is just led by, I believe it's led by Beijing, by China. But the entire Earth decide together that they're going to build these huge engine thrusters in order to transport Earth away from the supernova. So the approaches to saving uh, people reflects uh, in Picard, it's all about saving individual lives. And in Wandering Earth, you want to not only save individual lives, but you also want to save the culture, the land, and the land of your ancestors. And so when you move the Earth, this shows an interconnectedness, interconnectedness uh, of nature, culture, and man in Chinese culture. And so, the, so in Wandering Earth, the survival of humanity is intertwined with the preservation of the planet, reflecting a cultural, pers a cultural perspective that emphasizes the interconnectedness of humans and nature. And this aligns with certain aspects of Chinese cultural, cultural values that value harmony with the natural world. In other words, the yin, yin and yang, yin meaning the darkness, yang meaning the light, 
and all one continuous circle, yin and yang. And this is a picture of how once you move the earth away from the sun, the earth becomes a frozen tundra. And this, and this is an artistic rendering of one of the engine thrusters moving the earth away. So here, cultural narratives and imagery. And so the narrative styles and imagery used in Picard Last Best Hope emphasize, uh, emphasizes the utilization of technology that may align with a Western tradition of depict, depicting heroic individuals overcoming challenges through ingenuity and innovation. The focus in uh, Picard Last Best Hope is often on the personal journeys and triumphs of the characters. In Wandering Earth, the grand scale of moving an entire planet and the emphasis on collective efforts can reflect a cultural tradition that values epic storytelling and emphasizes the strength and resilience of the collective rather than individual heroes. The narrative may draw on Chinese a cultural elements such as mythology, history, and a sense of unity in the face of adversity. Cultural perspectives on risk and sacrifice. So you know, the, the, approach, the approaches in both works reflect different cultural perspectives on risk and sacrifice. And so in Picard, Last Best Hope, it emphasizes preserving lives by evacuating people and prioritizing people's lives safety above all else. This aligns with the Western cultural tendency to prioritize individual safety and minimize risks to individual lives. In the, in the novel, the mantra, choose life, choose life, becomes a mantra as the Federation pleads with the Romulans to trust them and let them evacuate the planet. The characters in Picard, Last Best Hope, are willing to sacrifice their lives to evacuate their enemy, Romulans, from their supernova sun. And Picard leads the charge to save all Romulans' lives at all costs. So this is very Christian. In other words, love thy neighbor, turn the other cheek. So that's very American culture, Western culture. In Wandering Earth, the decision to use massive engines to move the planet involves significant risks and sacrifices. The characters are willing to undertake immense challenges and personal sacrifices for the greater good. This reflects a cultural perspective that values collective um, survival over individual safety and places importance on sacrifice and perseverance in the face of adversity. The characters in Wandering Earth are willing to sacrifice their lives to move the Earth to a safer place. Lee Pei Chang, and the, that's the astronaut in the, on the space station, and his son Li Chu are willing to sacrifice their lives to save planet Earth from the supernova sun at all costs. And then the spoiler alert is when I talk about how the Chinese astronaut uh, crashes his space station into Jupiter, thereby he sacrifices his life for the greater good. So cultural notions of heroism. The concept of heroism differs in both uh, works. In Picard, Last Best Hope, that heroes are often depicted as individuals who lead and make crucial decisions during the crisis. Their heroic acts involve strategic planning, resourcefulness, and ensuring the safety of others. In Wandering Earth, her heroism is often portrayed in a more collective and collaborative manner. It involves individual, uh, Individ ordinary individuals coming together and each playing a role in the grand mission of moving the planet. The heroes in Wandering Earth can be seen as representatives of the collective strength of humanity, reflecting cultural values that emphasize unity, cooperation, and the idea that every individual can contribute to a greater cause. Cultural attitudes towards space exploration. So in Picard, Last Hope, Obviously, um, the evacuation strategy of using spaceships aligns with the values of exploration, curiosity, and the pursuit of knowledge, which is associated with Western space exploration um, endeavors. In Wandering Earth, the emphasis is on saving not just the people, but the entire planet. This reflects a cultural perspective that reviews space as an extension of humanity's home and emphasizes the preservation of Earth itself. So the 
approach of moving the planet embodies a sense of stewardship and responsibility toward the natural environment, reflecting a cultural context that places importance on the relationship between humans and their home planet. Um, and then I think we went over this a, a little bit. Um, cultural perspectives and authority and expertise. And so in Picard, The Last Generation, decision-making involves consultations with experts and a reliance on scientific knowledge. This reflects Western um, cultural emphasis on expertise, rash, rationality, and the value placed on specialized knowledge. And in Star Trek, the people of the Federation vote on whether or not Starfleet should continue the massive evacuation of Romulus. In Wandering Earth, there is often a strong reliance on authority of leaders and institutions. Decisions are made by those in power and the population generally follows their directives. In other words, there's no voting. The people just follow what the leaders tell them to do. And in Wandering Earth, all the governments of the world rally together to build those thrusters. And then here, um, cultural notions of optimism and determinism. The overall tone and outlook presented in the works can differ. In Picard, Last Best Hope, there is often a sense of optimism, highlighting the resilience and ingenuity of humanity in the face of adversity. The focus is on finding solutions and overcoming challenges reflecting a, an American cultural belief in progress and the ability to shape a better future. In Wandering Earth, there can be a more deterministic perspective emphasizing the inevitability of certain events and the need to adapt to uh, circumstances. This narrative may present a more fatalistic outlook acknowledging the scale of challenges and the limited agency of individuals in the face of larger forces. This can reflect cultural perspectives that, in other words, Chinese perspectives that place emphasis on accepting and adapting to the realities of life. Uh, cu cultural notions of interdependence and interconnectedness. Uh, in Picard, Last Best Hope, um, the, the focus is on evacuating people to safety with the underlying belief in the interconnectedness of individuals and their reliance on each other for survival. This reflects cultural values that emphasize community, cooperation, and the importance of social bonds. In Wandering Earth, the approach of moving the planet reflects a deeper sense of interconnectedness between uh, humans and their environment. It reflects a cultural perspective that recognizes the interdependence of humanity and nature, viewing them as inseparable entities. This reflects the Chinese values that places importance on the harmonious relationships between humans and the natural world. So these additional points provide uh, further insights into cultural perspectives on authority, expertise, optimism, determination, and interconnectedness. By considering these aspects, we gain a deeper understanding of how cultural backgrounds shape the approaches to saving people from a so, so supernova in Picard, Last Best Hope, and Wandering Earth. In, Star, in the Star Trek universe, the Federation's decision to evacuate Romulan citizens from a supernova using spaceships is consistent with the established lore and principles of the Star Trek series. The Federation as portrayed in Star Trek is a technologically advanced civilization with a long history of space exploration and the ability to build and operate sophisticated spaceships. In this context, it makes sense for them to utilize their advanced spacecraft to evacuate people from a supernova. On the other hand, the wandering Earth represents a different fictional universe and a unique approach to the problem of a, uh, a supernova. In this story, the Earth itself is equipped with massive thrusters to move the entire planet out of harm's way. This concept allows for a visual, visually striking and dramatic narrative with the Earth becoming a giant spaceship to escape the destructive force of the supernova. The filmmakers likely chose this approach to create a distinctive and visually impacted, impactful story. And so when you have uh, engine thrusters that are evacuating the planet, it has a has an incredible 
visual spectacle. It has high stakes and tension. It's a unique concept and has symbolic re resonance because moving the earth represents a monumental undertaking and a united effort by humanity to ensure its survival. It carries a symbolic resonance, highlighting humanity's resilience and determination in the face of overwhelming odds. So by choosing to move the earth, the, the filmmakers were able to create a visually striking, high stakes a and unique story that stands out from other narratives involving supernova evacuations. And this approach allows the wandering earth to deliver a memorable story. So in Chinese culture, there is a strong emphasis on family bonds and the duty of descendants to honor and protect their ancestors. So the act of moving earth represents moving the home of humanity and the ancestral land, which could be seen as an embodiment of the sense of duty and responsibility by taking such drastic measures to ensure the survival of the planet and its inhabitants. The characters in the film could be seen as fulfilling their family obligations to their ancestors. And so the act of leaving the earth or leaving uh, with spaceships it is seen as abandoning one's ancestors and an end to Chinese society. And, and actually in uh, Picard, Last Best Hope, there was a lot of concern among the Romulans that if they left Romulus or evacuated Romulus, that would be the end of Romulan culture. And in Picard, Last Best Hope, uh, Picard tries very hard to place the refugees in places that where Romulans could resume their culture and not be just a refugee camp. But of course, due to politics, that's not that was not the case. So you have to read the book to find out. Whereas um, in Wandering Earth, they evacuate the plant, they evacuate the evacuating using by pulling the um, earth, um, by pulling the earth um, away from the supernova sun. Now think, think of it this way. What if um, Star Trek were written from a Chinese point of view, then you would have, you could still have um, Starfleet trying to help Romulus. And instead, Starfleet, instead of thinking about, I think I'm going to have spaceships to take to, to evacuate the people. What if Starfleet had come up with a tractor beam to move the entire planet of Romulus away from the sun? That would have saved them the, the trouble of having to build spaceships and, and all the ensuing problems that, that, that come with refugee camps. If they, and I think they would have had the technology to build a gigantic tractor beam if all of the spaceships came together and channeled their energy into one tractor beam to pull the planet away from the sun. Of course, nobody thought to do that, um, but that would be, if, if I were to ask my students to create an alternate creative uh, ending and to write Star Trek, um, Star Trek episodes from a Chinese point of view, that would be one way of writing Star Trek from a Chinese point of view. So anyway, getting back to my presentation. So in traditional Chinese culture, the connection to ancestral land and the concept of home is deeply rooted. Moving away from one's homeland, especially on a large scale, like evacuating an entire planet, would be seen as a significant departure from the traditions and values associated with family piety. It might be perceived as a rupture in the continu continuity of Chinese society and a potential disruption of the ancestral lineage, which is what happened to the Romulans when they all got separated. In traditional Chinese thought, the connection to, um, to ancestral land and concept of home is highly valued. The idea of family piety emphasizes the respect and care for one's ancestors, which includes maintaining a connection to the land where they live and where their ancestral graves may be located. The ancestral land is seen as a physical and symbolic representation of the family's roots, heritage, and cultural identity. And also as a side note, if you read African science fiction, uh, in particular Bintu, um, the, you also see the theme, same themes of the ancestral land seen as a, in Chinese science fiction, the ancestral land is China, and in African science fiction, the ancestral land is uh, 
um, Africa. So you guys got to read, you, you have to read um, Bintu, B-I-N-T-U. It's, it's a great novel about African science fiction. And I, uh, what I would have done with this paper, if I had had the time and thought of it sooner, is I could have added Bintu to this presentation. How would Bintu, uh, um, Nnedi Oforato, that's the, I hope I'm saying that right, that's the African writer who wrote Bintu, uh, in that story, well, I'm not going to go into, but they also have the same ancestral connection to the land, family roots, and heritage. So I'll do that as a different discussion. How's that? I'll add Bintu to in my in another video. I don't know if it's going to be my next video, but in another video, I will I will compare and contrast all of this with Bintu. And so I'll have all three of these, and I'll make that I'll make really short since it will be all very repetitive, and I'll focus mainly on what Bintu would have done. So um, from this, here, here you have the, this is so, so telling of, they would drag all of the frozen, all the frozen remnants of earth because everything's been frozen. Once you take earth away from the sun then all of the buildings and all the major cities and the people living in them would all be frozen or frozen to death. And only the people chosen by lottery got to live in the underground cities. And so from this perspective, the act of eval, and, and here you see a frozen Shanghai 2044. So this is very telling about how you preserve ancient society and you're preserving it in ice. And so um, here it's all about preserving Chinese culture. So not only are you evacuating earth from, uh, from the supernova, you're also preserving the culture and, and the land of your ancestors which signifies the continuation of family traditions. And so the, the act of, of evacuating an entire planet may carry a sense of uh, finality and irreversibility, but it could be interpreted as abandoning not only the physical land, but also the spiritual and cultural essence associated with the ancestral lineage. This departure from the homeland could be viewed as a significant change that, in other words, if everybody were to fly away from within spaceships and then scatter throughout the universe, then the Chinese culture would be lost. And so that's what happened to the Romulans. So moving away from your ancestral land may raise concerns about the potential loss or dilution of cultural values, customs, and rituals that are deeply tied to the ancestral homeland. Without the physical presence of the, of the ancestral land, there may be a fear that future generations will lose touch with their heritage and struggle to maintain a strong sense of identity and continuity, which is what happened in, um, in, in, in this book where the Romulans got scattered everywhere and they, they tried valiantly to maintain Romulan identity. And then um, by leaving the um, homeland behind, there is a risk of disrupting the intergenerational trans transfer of knowledge, wisdom, and cultural practices that have shaped Chinese uh, society for centuries. And if you read into the African um, story, the African science fiction story, that also is the case where when Bintu leaves her ancestral ancestral land, she feels like she's she's leaving the continuity of her lineage. So the, so African and Chinese cultures have that in common that 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 very important tie, that interconnectedness to nature and to the ancestral land. Yeah. So so that's why that's going to be a great topic for my next um, next uh, what should, my next video. So from a broad cultural standpoint, traditional Chinese values place, and also African values places great importance on the preservation of cultural heritage, ancestral lineage, and the continuity of cultural traditions. The Chinese emphasis on family piety and the connection to ancestral land reflects a reverence for cultural values and identity. In this context, some individuals might argue that preserving nature is of paramount importance, even if it means taking extraordinary me measures, such as moving the entire planet, as it ensures the transmission of cultural heritage to future generations. On the other hand, from a Western Starfleet perspective, as portrayed in Star Trek, 
The emphasis is on the principles of justice, compassion, and the preservation of life. The Federation values prioritize the well-being and survival of individuals, including those from different cultures, over the preservation of any specific cultural identity. In this view, saving lives would take precedence over cultural preservation. In the fictional Star Trek universe, particularly in the context of the Romulan supernova crisis depicted in the 2009 film and the subsequent TV series, Star Trek Picard, the displacement of Romulan lives and their scattering across refugee camps had significant implications for their cultural identity and continuity. The Romulan culture is depicted as rich and complex with its own traditions, values, and societal structures. When the Romulans faced, faced the impending destruction of their homeworld due to the super, supernova, Starfleet, led by Jean-Luc Picard, initiated a rescue mission to evacuate as many Romulan citizens as possible. However, due to unforeseen circumstances and political complexities, the evacuation efforts fell short, leaving many Romulans displaced and scattered across the neutral zone. The dispersal of the Romulan population and their relocation to refugee camps undoubtedly disrupted the continuity of their culture of their cult of Romulan culture. And when the Romulans were disrooted from their homeland, they faced challenges in maintaining their cultural heritage. And so in the case of the Romulans, the case of the loss of their home world and the scattering of their population meant that they were cut off from their traditional roots and faced the need to adapt to new uh, circumstances. The refugee camps, while providing temporary shelter, could not fully replicate the societal structures and cultural environment that the Romulans were accustomed to. So in this picture, um, Picard had already um, evacuated a lot of the Romulans to a refugee camp. And so here are the nurses, not the nurses, the nuns that help um, soothe the Romulans and, and help with the evacuation. So, so in Starfleet, even in the face of such challenges, cultural resilience can play a role in preserving elements of a culture. Romulan survivors in the Star Trek narrative would likely strive to maintain their cultural identity and adapt their traditions to their new circumstances. The Romulan culture, while undoubtedly affected by the, by the diaspora, may continue to evolve and find new ways to express itself with the context of the scattered population. In conclusion, the scattering of Romulan lives due to the supernova and their placement in refugee camps did pose challenges to the continuity of Romulan culture. However, the long-term impact and the ability of the Romulans to preserve their cultural heritage would depend on several factors, including the resilience of the Romulan people and the capacity to adapt and maintain their cultural identity in their new circumstances. So it's all about adapting to new circumstances and resilience in the Starfleet um, universe, which is more, and, and, and the saving of individual lives, which is more important. And then and that the preservation of culture would still continue, even if you don't move the whole planet of Romulus away from the sun. So for Starfleet, when evacuating people from an impending supernova, what is most important is saving lives. Starfleet will then build huge spaceships to save lives by evacuating people off of the planet and then placing them wherever they can on neighboring planets, neighboring colonies, or anywhere else as long as Romulan lives are saved. Because of Americans' culture emphasis on the individual and individual happiness and freedom, saving individual lives is more important than conserving native culture. And so um, don't miss wandering, um, oh, and for wandering earth, it's the opposite. Saving the culture of the ancestors is just as important as saving lives. As a result, uh, earth is being moved to a safer galaxy away from the exploding sun. By saving earth, one is able to conserve the land of one's ancestors conserve one's traditions, and conserve the continuity of culture. 
which is just as important, if not more so, than saving individual lives. Therefore, Wandering Earth reflects the Chinese values of respecting the elder, respecting the past, and conserving Chinese uh, culture. Therefore, each story's method of evacuation reflects their culture's value system, which means that science fiction around the world reflects each country's fears, aspirations, and cultural values. And so don't miss Wandering Earth 2, okay, which is going to come out in uh, 2026. And so you can get Wandering Earth 2, which is available on Amazon um, Prime. If you go to Amazon and you click on whether you want to buy it or rent it, you can now get the DVD, which is available. So Wandering Earth 2, which came out in 2023, is now available. So um, I hope you enjoyed my, my foray into Wandering Earth and Star Trek. And Star Trek also has an upcoming book, which I don't have here, um, it, called The Dark Veil, and also other Star Trek books. And also um, Picard, um, the, the TV series, has, it has is season two, season three, and I think it's rumored that they might have a season four. Um, but I'm not sure. I, just, I saw rumors in which you see the picture of Jean-Luc Picard, and then the question mark saying, is there going to be a season four? So stay tuned for more uh, for more from my science fiction channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me.